Hey gang, welcome back to RC Diesel Channel. What I got for you today, another injection pump. This is a CAV off of a Perkins. Forget what model of Massey tractor this came off of, but the main issue is it's kind of hard starting and this advanced damper on the bottom is leaking diesel fuel. So they want this gone through, resealed, checked out. See if we can find anything else wrong with it. I think that's my seal kit right there, the FI 1111. So with that, I'll get you set up here and let's tear into this thing, see what we find. All right, so we'll start by pulling off that top cover, I guess. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing here is we're missing one of the seals for these nuts. This one has one, that one does not. So that's a problem. That's fine, those are in the seal kit, but. Okay, so this is set up a little different than most of what I've been seeing. One thing I want to mention here actually is this pump has been into before. And I know that because I'll show you this later, but the snap ring inside here is not in the right place for the, for the timing, which makes timing this going to be very difficult. And the other thing is it doesn't have any of the ties or anything on it. So I know that somebody's been in this pump before. This is not the first time it's coming apart. Okay, so I see the second problem already. I'll show you in a second here. Just let me get this spring off. Set my cover down there. So this little guy right here, there should be a spring right, right in between there. There's supposed to be a spring there. And that spring is not there. I'll just pop you up a picture to show you what I'm talking about there. Okay, we'll lay these guys, whoop. That's a good way to lose things. Put that one there. There's our one seal that came out of that guy. I don't know, can you see this if I work on this down here? Yeah, sure you can. We gotta replace the seals on these shafts so we might as well get them out of there right away. Okay, and then this one. There we go, so that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing to that cover. I might pull this out yet and replace those seals too, I guess. Yeah, let's do that right away. Actually, I should probably do that small one first. It's all monkeyed up. And there's our ceiling washer and bleeder. Okay, now we got our governor assembly here. So we're gonna pull this apart. Seems like the metering valve is working good. And Z-bar seems decent enough. No, I can't get this one. Yeah, see, look at that. This one, the uh, stud was not locked. And on this one it is. I don't know if you can see that from your angle or not, but it has these, these guys here are supposed to be folded up against to hold these locked. This one is not locked. This one is locked. Just bend them down. Nope, get in there. There we go. I guess I didn't get that one down far enough. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay, that one wasn't even tight. No. Nope. Problem is my socket's not the right size. I don't know if that's rounded off or why that's acting like that. No. Okay, now we got that little guy, and it looks like they locked that one, so that's good. I need just some smaller sockets. Nope. 
Seems like half of this stuff is standard. No, that's one. It's our governor assembly right there. Well, it's the control assembly, I guess. This is only part of the governor. The weights are still down inside there. Metering valve doesn't look bad. It's got a touch of wear there, but doesn't seem too bad. Oof, pretty dirty in there. Let's get this guy apart first, I guess. Okay, where's our other spring? Should be another one in there. Yeah, it is down there. Okay, and we're gonna pull out our screen. And that housing. And we should get that spring out of there next. There it is. It's that one paper seal down inside there that's all degraded. Let me get this stuff put out of the way first here. Man, this thing's dirty. Wow. Let's get some of the main crunchy stuff out of there. Okay, let's have a look at these charge pump veins. They don't actually look that bad. These have obviously been replaced not that long ago. Okay. Okay, let's get this damper off of here. There's a little check ball there that likes to fall out when you take these things out. Timing advance seems to move pretty easy. And definitely the bore is wore there, so that's not very good. I just pulled the timing advance piston out. You can see the heavy wear here and here. This is a big spot here, so. That piston and the housing should probably be replaced. So it's interesting, this cam ring doesn't actually have a directional marking on it. Usually they have an arrow on them. And there's a fair amount of wear on those 
ramps in there. So here's a good, uh, good vantage point of that snap ring in there. I'll show you what I was talking about before. See that snap ring right there. The, this edge here should be in that timing window right there. So you can see that it's not clocked in the right position. That's because somebody has taken this apart and they didn't realize what they were doing and they didn't put that snap ring back in the right spot. They just put it in. That snap ring is for timing. Now I don't have an actual timing bench or fuel bench for this, so I can't, I can't fix that. I can't, do, I can't put that in the right spot. So I'm gonna have to mark it and put it back exactly where this one is. Or maybe this pump is too wore out, we'll see yet. That rotor doesn't feel too good. We'll have to see. I think I'm gonna take this rotor end apart first just in case it is actually bad enough that this pump isn't worth rebuilding or at least that I, I can't rebuild it. It's gotta find a sort of halfway convenient way to clamp this guy without damaging it. I'm gonna pull the transfer pump liner out. Ooh, that thing is stuck in there. What's with that? Hmm, that should not be that tight. What is going on here? Oh, what? Oh, wow. What happened? I'll tell you what happened when people that don't know what they're doing get a hold of these things. That's what happened. I can move it, but man, is it jammed in there. Oh, I don't think I've ever had to take one of these out with pliers before. Wow. That's my homemade tool for removing the rotors. So you gotta remember, these are left hand thread, so you have to tighten them off. Okay, let's see how we're looking here. It doesn't even look that bad actually. Yeah, we got some pretty good wear on the around the ports here. Hmm. I can still see a lot of the machining marks in there. You'll have to take my word for it, because I'll never be able to get the camera to focus into that thing. But yeah, I think this is pretty fixable. Oh, I didn't take my snap ring out. That's our governor weight assembly. Here we 
Everything looks fine there. So let's have a look at our plungers. I'll get a clean rag. Now normally, if you don't see any big wear marks on these things, then they're usually still good. They usually still measure good. Yeah, it kind of looks like brand new, that one. Check our shoe. Seems to be nice. Rolls nice in there. That one too looks really good. Nice little button wore into the shoe there. Slides good, rolls, yeah, rolls good. Ooh, this one's sticky. Okay, so that one, that one's got a bit of wear on it. Doesn't look bad though. I think we're okay. But this one is sticky. Yeah, we got a score. Yeah, this one's not good. Shoot. Ah, oh, shoot. Got a burr or something has gotten into this plunger, so now I'm going to have to find out. Last time I replaced a rotor, um, rotor and head assembly was like 1800 bucks. So... Then you put in a few hours of labor and a few, and a, and a kit and a couple other pieces. We need that damper. We're gonna be, you know, two, three thousand dollars pretty quick. So this may not be worth me rebuilding simply because I can't put this on a test bench and make everything perfect. I can just make it work again. But for the same money, if you can have a, a one that's been bench tested and flowed and set up exactly perfectly, it's probably worth it to go that route. So I will have to talk to the customer. Okay, well, I talked to my customer and yeah, cost-wise, it's just not going to be worth it for me to fix this. So uh, we do need a good core, so I'm just going to put it back together. Okay, that's it for that one. I guess I don't get to rebuild it, but it'll go back for core and the customer will get one that's set up really nice and proper. I guess that's it. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.